Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're going to check out the April Fool's Day Golden Sealed. I have no idea what to expect, so I guess we'll build our deck and find out. So it looks like some sort of uh, Chaos Sealed with multiple different expansions. Well, that's a lot of rares. Let's have a closer look. So we can, first off, uh, the way I like to build my sealed decks is take a look at uh, rares and mythics, which appear to be <laughs> most of the cards. Do we have any commons and uncommons? I guess it explains that. So only rares. Well, that makes it uh, a little different than your usual sealed build, but we can still kind of sort by color to see what we're working with. So in white, We've got some decent cards, board wipe or two, some flying angels as well. Blue doesn't look incredibly deep. Black might be a little better, let's see. Well, we've got some good top end cards, another couple board wipes as well. A red is not particularly deep either. And then greens, only two cards. But uh, there are quite a few multicolored options. So we're probably going to end up in a two or three color deck at the very least. And then uh, the Inner Sun, a nice colorless option. Well, this is not going to be an easy deck to build. So maybe we can start by looking at some of our multicolored options and see if that gives us a bit more direction. So the Izzet cards are both pretty mediocre. Uh, Golgari has some good options. A red-green, also pretty good. And then blue-green has a few more options as well. And then Atraxa, a four-color option. So, yeah, can we make Atraxa work? It's not like we're going to have a ton of ramp, since those cards tend to be more commons and uncommons. So it might just be a matter of shoving as many powerful cards in one deck as possible. And it's not like our mana fixing is all that great either. Got some green dual lands, so maybe a base green deck could work, but then we go back to the fact that we don't have a ton of green monocolored cards. Got a decent number of uh, multicolored options, I suppose. So yeah, what if we just do kind of a multicolor green deck and play all of these? Uh, Virtue Strength, not going to be particularly amazing. Hunger Dominus could be worth a shot. And I don't think we go all the way up to Niv. Morocco could be worth it. So yeah, what are we missing out on in white? If we're just touching white for a card like Atraxa, maybe Rocco. Elishnorn could be okay. Don't think we have much synergy with the Awakening. Kind of need some more discard outlets for that to work. Now I guess we do have double No Witnesses. So we could try to build a control deck with Deadly Cover-Up as well. Although it's not like we're going to be facing a ton of aggro decks either, since most decks will be playing a bunch of bombs in all sorts of colors. So I don't think we need to go too crazy on the Sweepers. So yeah, white doesn't seem to have anything too amazing left that I would like to splash. Archangel's double white, which we're going to avoid here, since our mana base is going to be stretched as is. Then in blue, we've got maybe a Fairy Mastermind. Gadgeteer is not going to have a ton of synergy, since we don't have many artifacts. And again, if we can keep it kind of light and avoid double blue cards, that's probably for the best. So maybe Teferi doesn't make the cut. Then Black has, as we mentioned, a couple sweepers. Maybe play Deadly Cover-Up still. And then Breach the Multiverse could be a powerful curve topper. But again, we're going to have to get there without too much in the way of ramp. So Pylon gives us some more spot removal. Vein Ripper's triple black, so that's going to be tough. And then 
I mean, it's possible we don't play red and just stick to four colors and then give up on these cards. Which might be for the best. Or red's not amazing. There's a couple good flyers. Carnosaur gives us some more early interaction. And I'm sure our deck is going to get run over by aggro in its current configuration. So we could always go back and dip a little bit deeper into white to um, play some of those sweepers we mentioned. Yeah, maybe that's not a terrible idea. So this one destroys all creatures with power 3 or greater. Which, you know, would also hit our own creatures, of course. But maybe we don't mind. And then no witnesses. And then at that point, do we want any of those cheaper white creatures as well? Archangel without the red is a bit less exciting. Um, Donita doesn't have many equipment to go with it. Kind of a synergy with uh, Dragonwing Glider, I suppose. Uh, and would also be pretty good with a Sword of Once and Future. But this one doesn't have any cheap instance that we can get back with it. So it's also kind of limited. So Etrata could make the cut just as a 1-4 Death Touch. And then Solkanar is a bit risky and would also require red mana. So I think we pass on Solkanar. So yeah, let's just take a look at our non-red cards and kind of double check our options. Also a deck that probably wants to play like 18 or 19 lands just because we don't have any early drops and we want to get to the late game. So we can already kind of adjust those numbers. We'll take a closer look at the mana base when we're closer to finishing. Okay, so 19 lands. Drag to the bottom, I guess, is good too in a four-color deck. Yeah, I'm a little bit all over the place, but that's kind of the nature of this sealed event, I guess. Terror Tide seems a little tricky to enable. Vein Ripper, I'm starting to consider now that we cut red and we do need to round out our deck in some way. Taisa, I guess, is fine just as a three drop. Assemble the players doesn't seem very good. Skralv, just gonna get swept up by our own board wipes. The hero, also not bad, but if we're gonna play all the board wipes, I probably want to avoid those cheaper creatures if possible. So Delny's not going to have many creatures to synergize with, don't have much life gain. We're on the Soldier's deck. And then not playing many auras. Donitha is always a solid pick, just as a 4-4 First Strike Vigilance lifelink. So it might be okay. Definitely don't want double blue. Not doing the artifact thing. Scroll of Isildur. Could steal an opposing artifact for a while but maybe a bit of a number with our own board wipes. And then, yeah, I guess if we can avoid double blue cards, that's probably for the best. So no Teferi. Although Teferi is good with all our sweepers. It might still be worth it, even if we won't be able to cast it reliably. And then no Obliterator, no Terror Tide, no Virtue. And then none of these red cards. Okay, so... This is 41 cards, and then we can have a closer look here. So here our curve, pretty high. And then Kellon gives us some two mana ramps, is actually pretty valuable. Doppelgang might be overkill, since most of our creatures are legendary as well, so we wouldn't be able to copy them necessarily. Although I guess in a pinch we can also use it as a five mana ramp card, just making an extra land. And then Glissa's great, Atrata's pretty good. We've got all these three mana Death Touch creatures. Plenty of sweepers, pylon, bit of spot removal. Vanifar can put those expensive creatures into play, so we can actually make use of them if we're unable to cast them. And then, yeah, Donitha, just a big lifelinker. Another sweeper. And then Breach. Hunger Dominus. And Atraxa. 
So yeah, this looks like a pile of cards, but might not be a bad starting point. And then we have to configure our mana base. This gives us an idea of kind of the distribution, but we also need to take into account that we need double white for no witnesses and the battle of Bywater. So yeah, five white sources is not going to cut it. Um, we also need double black. So currently have six black sources. Ideally get those numbers up as well. For blue, we don't need a ton. Unless we want to cast a fairy, which again is kind of uh, questionable. But if we do want to reliably cast Kellen and Mastermind on turn two, we would need a few more blue sources. So six right now is maybe not crazy. Um, and then green, we would have six green sources at the moment. I think that's reasonable, probably don't need more. Only need double green at seven mana. So yeah, we would like to increase our white sources and our black sources. But there's not a lot of wiggle room here. So I don't think I cut a land, I think we just cut one of our spells. And uh, can maybe make it the Hunger Dominus. Since we're not going to have a ton of creatures in play to immediately double their power and toughness. And we already have a couple seven drops. And then let's see, can I maybe cut a forest? Yeah, maybe that's fine. And then add an extra planes so we have more double whites for witnesses and battle. And then stay at six black sources and six blue sources. Okay, looks uh, good enough, I guess. Our uh, crazy four-color Atraxa sealed deck. Just gotta hope we don't face too many aggressive decks. Okay, we're on the draw without a green mana. Um, can still drag to the bottom early, but yeah, I'll take a mulligan. All right, this is a bit better. So get rid of Breach since we're furthest from casting it. And then at least Mastermind doesn't get swept up by our Battle of Bywater. And Vanifar isn't the worst. Something I can cast early, but maybe we want to be picky. Putting this in the graveyard also helps Izoni. And then dig towards a second white source for battle. Their opponent Mardu Colors with case of the stashed skeleton. Can flash in the Mastermind. And an Urabrask's Forge, that's a problem since our sweepers can't handle the artifact. Yeah, that's gonna start ending up pretty quickly. This one has Menace, so can block it even if I wanted to. Yeah, do we have anything in our deck that destroys artifacts? Can't think of much. Assemble the players, another enchantment that can provide some card advantage. So if they build their deck around Assemble, our battle's not going to be all that great. And now a Cryptex. All right, Glissa's not bad. That can destroy enchantments if it connects. And pile on. It's probably good enough to keep. And then I'll hang back with the Mastermind, I guess. We're not out racing the opponents as it stands. Can also use Glissa to remove counters from Urbrask Forge to make it less uh, impactful. Flail can give plus two power. So we can double block their skeleton to take it out. And then the case is solved. So this they can sacrifice only as a sorcery, so I could destroy it now with Glissa, which is probably worthwhile. 
Pylon can deal with the token for a turn, so we don't take four. And then next turn, Glissa can remove counters from Orobrask's Forge. I think that's the plan. Could also activate Fairy Mastermind. Alright, pass it back. Forge triggers. Yeah, probably want to avoid taking four. Next turn I do get to play Zoni as well. And then... No witnesses I could keep as insurance. Although we already have Battle of Bywater. So that's probably overkill. And then probably don't need Coast either. That opponent's gonna craft with a flail and make the blunderbuss. So we get to attack, remove counters, play Zoni. There we go. Removing oil like we're BP. Shield roots will sack Mastermind. And with her opponent at 8, these all have menace, so we should be able to get there. Yeah, he's only pretty good as it turns out. All right, sweet. So we got our first win. I'll do the next one. Okay, we've got three of our callers. Can cast Taisa, a drag with another swamp. So it looks good enough. Turn one mountain got me kind of scared. Um, I guess it's not going to be realistic to adventure Kellen on turn 2, but would be a reason to play our green mana first. Tablet of Completion, okay, can help them ramp as well. So we're looking at Taisa. Opponent with a face down card. Yeah, I guess. We're probably going to end up removing our own Taysa with drag at some points if we get double black. But for now I need to get something on the board. And then maybe we get a chance to make a clue token so we can draw a card next turn if we can't do anything else. Hide in plain sight, making more face down cards. Okay, I mean drag to the bottom's looking good if we find our second black source. Same with deadly cover-up, of course. At least our artifact we can cast no matter what. And a 2-3 also lines up pretty well here. Bones attacking, that's interesting, so they... I see, it's a performer. Alright, I'll take three, I guess. And then... I can hang back. And then take a bunch more damage next turn. Or I can hope to attack, make a clue. And then I guess uh, we'll be able to make a spirit token, draw a card, try and hit our second black. Maybe worth it. Either way, we can play Donathan next turn, which might also gain us some life back. And then we're pretty far from casting Teferi. Opponent actually double blocking, okay. Well. That uh, lessens the need for a sweeper, I guess. Opponent had a land and a bodyguard. So next turn play Donatha. And then hopefully the inner sun can find some goodies. So Tablet now has three oil counters. Opponent passes as we find Atraxa. Okay. So untapped land would be great. Opponent's not happy with the Sharp-Eyed Rookie at this point. So they might also have some expensive cards in hand. 
Mishra's Command takes out Danitha and Pump's Performer, so take 7 down to 4. So we're very close to dead. Can wipe the board to deal with the Performer. Or I could play the Inner Sun, hope they can deal a damage or that we discover something useful. Yeah, let's just play the Inner Sun, take a bit of a risk here. And we found Battle of Bywater. So that'll deal with the performer as well. Had a pretty good chance of hitting a sweeper, to be honest. Ooh, Phoenix, 3-3 three, three flyer that can come back from the graveyard. So maybe Deadly Cover-Up can get rid of it for good. Well, don't have a ton of great options otherwise. So get rid of the Phoenix. And we get to have a look at the opponent's hand, which is also valuable. A Realm Scorcher, Hellkite. Yeah, that's uh, gonna kill me next turn, isn't it? Unless our inner son finds something useful. And then they've got some pretty good creatures left. And then can have a look at their library, which is kind of fun to see how they configured their deck. Well, they actually got away with just three colors, but they've got a pretty good density of powerful threats. So their mana base is not quite as crazy as ours. All right, well, and search. At least the Phoenix doesn't come back. And what do we hit? Elish Norn. So stops ETB effects, but this can just hit us for four in the air. Which is, uh, yeah, likely game over. So there's Alkite. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing green mana for Kellen. Do we want to keep still? I mean, any black source cast drag, any white source cast no witnesses. So we've got sweepers for days. And Teferi, yeah, I'll keep that one. We've got the double blue for it now. And pairs quite well with our board wipes. So we can already drag to the bottom with three basic line types if needed. Opponent playing the Jeskai Colors with a Horn of Gondor. Hmm, that's a problem. I guess our sweepers can sort of keep it in check. But it is an artifact that's not easily removed. I guess Kellen can actually destroy artifacts once it starts attacking. So that's a potential answer. Now the investigator doesn't die to drag to the bottom. So might want to wait to cast this one here. Although it does mean Teferi is more likely to be under pressure once we play it. I think I still want to be patient. And then with an extra basic client type, it could be a bit more effective. And then with an extra white source, we can no witnesses. Okay. So drag is now minus four. So it doesn't take out Karn, sadly. So what's my plan? Play Teferi, draw a card, and then lose it next turn. Or we can just play Kellen. Although it's not gonna be able to attack past the Investigator. So it doesn't actually help me too much. Could always use the adventure just to ramp, maybe get Breach the Multiverse out, or find our second white, which would be better here. Okay. So, opponent's got a bunch of mana. They can activate Horn of Gondor. And they've got some clue tokens they can then sacrifice to draw. Next turn we would have the mana to play Atraxa, so that would be a fine draw as well. Or we could find it with Breach. Opponent's just gonna pass with a bunch of mana untapped. Well, we found our second white for no witnesses. So that seems like the safest play now. Opponent's gonna draw. And then... Draw again. Okay. 
their own four colors as well. And now an Urbrask's Forge. Yeah, we faced that one before. And another problematic artifact. Although now Kellen maybe can uh, try to take those out. Or we can just go straight for Breach the Multiverse and kind of go over the top. Let's see. Yeah, I'm a little short of going Kellen plus Teferi, which would otherwise maybe be worth it. Could go Kellen plus Taisa. Sure, our opponent also could have a Sweeper in hand, which pairs well with all these artifacts. But I guess I would rather have them cast a Sweeper before we breach the multiverse. Opponent draws. And a Cityscape leveler, wow. Going for Tessa instead of Kellen. They may not realize we can destroy artifacts with it. Okay, so I think the plan now is attack with Kellen, destroy leveler, and then breach to maybe get it back so they can't unearth it. And then either Vein Ripper or Izoni on this side of the battlefield, double Bus Crusher. Mishra, Jace, how close are we to milling the opponent out? I guess we can just win with Jace here. Yeah, that works. And then it doesn't matter too much what we do. Can uh, collect evidence, mill for 15. Yeah, it turns out that uh, Breach plus Jace in Limited is pretty busted. So unless they can deal 7 damage in their upkeep, we should have this one. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a 2 lander, missing green for Glissa. If we could get the Glissa down early and draw some extra cards with it, this hand could work. We also have a couple sweepers we can cast. But yeah, hitting our land drops is kind of the key message here. And we're not super likely to get Glissa down on turn 3 with only six green sources. But uh, it's not a terrible hand either, since we already have a black and a white source, so drawing either one of them gets our sweepers online. Plus we get to surveil, which is also a big deal here. So look for land. Island is probably the least interesting land. It's not green, white, or black, so I'm gonna have to decline, sadly. Alright, find another island, so not too sad we bend one of them. So we've got our double white, missing green for Glissa, but at least we're hitting our land drops. Opponent's also taking things slow. And now we can either Glissa or Donitha. To be mana efficient, I'll play Donitha first. Glissa's probably the more valuable creature should they have removal here. All right, the fairy's great with all these board wipes. Just gonna draw with it. No the time or place, Might draw into a tap a land. Ooh, Elish Norn. Do we have any synergies with it in hands? Not really. I think we just draw once again. I am here to learn. And then can attack. And then I'm just gonna play Glissa here over Vanifar. Don't want to overextend into a potential board wipe. Okay, Niv Mizzet Supreme with Hexproof from Monocolored. So can still attack into it with Glissa at least. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, maybe draw into a black source for Breach the Multiverse. Teferi can draw as well. Ooh, Doppelgang. Does Doppelgang do anything for me? 
So let's say we want to doppelgang x equals 2, that's 8 mana. So yeah, we could do that. And then I can copy my sewers just to make some more land drops. And then I guess these are all legendary, which is often going to be the case. So maybe I just copy their uh, fortress as well. All right, so we've got a bunch of lanes now we can breach. Have to be a little careful not to mill too many cards since we might end up decking. Could have made myself a niv it as well if I wanted to. But I think the lands will be more useful when we've got a bunch of board wipes in hand. Narset into case of the stashed skeleton. They can pressure to ferry here, but that leaves them more vulnerable on the way back. So your opponent just has to pass it back. Alright, so they've got two blockers. Um, is there any way I can just win here? The ferry, if I can draw, can maybe ultimate. So there's a chance Breach finds something useful. Yeah, I don't think I want to wipe the board, so I'm fine to cast Breach here. And then... Let's see, if I were to animate Double Fortress, do we have guaranteed lethal? Two blockers. Point would still take at least six. So not quite. Yeah, let's uh, just Breach the Multiverse. I could play Elish Norn first to maybe double some triggers. Could be fun. Alright, what do we hit on the opponent's side? Alright, enough for lethal apparently. We can have a quick peek here out of curiosity. But uh, yeah, Luca can maybe remove some blockers for us. Aragdos isn't bad, so we're gonna Ojutai. And then on our side, we could get back. Nothing too exciting, just a Taisa or an Etrata. But uh, yeah, either way, our opponent's in trouble here. Alright, so we got our three wins. And we claim our beautiful sleeve here. Okay, so yeah, that was the sealed event. Check it out while it's still around, since it's only here for a few hours. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.